Hey guys, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to wire up a dot star LED strip to an Arduino Uno. What you're going to need to be able to complete this tutorial is the dot star LED strip itself, some jumper cables, an Arduino Uno, and a USB cable to bring it all to your computer so that you can upload code to the Uno. You can follow along with a different Arduino if you want, but the wiring may be a little bit different. So what is this in front of us? This LED strip consists of a bunch of different LEDs that have a microcontroller under each one. That microcontroller is something we can send data to. The microcontroller interprets that data and then populates the color on the LED, any given LED, uh, based off of the data sent to it. Data moves one direction down this strip. In this case, it moves this way. Now, if we take a close look at the LED strip, what we see is that there's a series of four pads on either side of the LED. On the left side of this LED here in the center, uh, what we see is we see, well, we see nothing actually. If we look at the next one over, we see ground, and then we see DI, which stands for data in, CI for clock in, and then five volts for five volts. This is a five volt strip. On the other side, instead of DI and CI, we see DO and CO. DI is data in, DO is data out, CI is clock in, CO is clock out. This suggests that the signal that is sent to the LEDs moves in one direction down the strip. It moves this way, also indicated by that arrow there. Now that arrow may or may not be on your strip, but there will definitely be indicators on the pads that indicate which side is your input side and which side is your output side. So this will tell you which end of the LED strip you want to connect to. In this case, the, this end of the strip, um, because the signal is going to go in versus the other end, which is on the spool. Now, one thing that's important to note here is that this LED strip can come in a variety of different packagings. You know, there could be 60 LEDs per meter, 30 LEDs per meter, whatever. Uh, there could be the silicone tubing or and also the color of the wires connected to the pads can change depending on the manufacturer. Now, you and I might think, OK, ground is usually black and red is usually five volts. But in this particular strip, ground is blue. Uh, Data in is red, clock is green, and five volts is black. So that is a little confusing. And what's worse is these two additional cables that are separate have black going to ground and red going to five volts, which means that if we connected the black line up here to the black line down here, and we tied them together because black is equal to black, we would be getting a short circuit between our power supply and ground, and that's bad news. So I'm not going to refer to these cables by their color, instead by what their electrical function is, and you need to know what the electrical function of your colors is. Now, I mentioned that the strip had these additional two wires here. What are these two wires for? These four wires here are gonna to connect to your Arduino as I have connected here. These two wires are connecting to an alternate power source, another power supply, a five volt power supply. Why do we need this? Well, the problem is, is each of these LEDs consumes up to 40 milliamps if you put it on full brightness, full white. The problem is, is that the Arduino can only supply about 200 milliamps, which means that this strip can draw much more than the Arduino can deliver. So you're going to want to connect another power supply to this if you're going to be powering up a long strip. If you're just lighting up a few LEDs like we are about to in this uh, tutorial, you're not going to have to worry about that. You can leave these ends free. So how do we wire this all up? You're going to want to connect 5 volts to 5 volts of the Arduino, ground to ground of the Arduino, and you're going to want to connect clock input to pin 13 on the Arduino Uno, and you're going to want to connect data input to pin 11 on the Arduino Uno. These two pins are SCK and master output slave input on the Arduino respectively. If you have a different device, you're going to have to check your own pin out for that device to make sure that you're connected to the dedicated spy lines of the device. Once that's done, just plug your Arduino into your computer and now we get to programming. So here I've already opened up a copy of the Arduino IDE on my Mac. This can be done on any computer using any of the IDEs that communicate with the Arduino, including if you're uploading sketches straight from the terminal. However, how you install the library may change depending on which IDE you're using. The official IDE on the Mac makes it quite easy. If we just go to sketch up here, include library, manage libraries, we can then type in dot star here, 
and it will come up with the Adafruit.star LED library. If we click this, we can select our version. I'm going to just choose the latest version at the time of this recording and hit install. And now we're done. If you don't have that functionality or if you're using a different approach, what you can do is you can visit the Adafruit website, learn.adafruit.com slash adafruit-dotstar-leds. And if you scroll about a third of the way down, you will see this link to click to download the adafruit.star library for Arduino. When you download that file, you can then manually install it wherever you keep your libraries um, for your Arduino. So now that that's done, what we're going to do is we're just going to load up a quick, easy example. If we go to File, Examples, Examples from Libraries, Adafruit.star, we're going to load up Strand Test. I'm just going to close this sketch in the back. So this here is a default program, uh, the program we saw earlier running on the LEDs. And we're going to have to make a few changes to this to make this work. Um, the ones, the changes we're going to make is we're going to comment out lines 18, so put in a slash slash there, and 19 slash slash. And we're going to uncomment line 27. Now if I upload this to my Arduino, if I upload this to the Arduino, we see that yes, we get the strands lighting up and we get the LEDs moving just like I showed earlier in the video. So let's take a look at this program and see what it is it is doing. So starting from the top, we're going to import the relevant libraries, the SPI library, because we're connected to the SPI lines and the Adafruit.star library. We're then going to choose an arbitrary number for how many LEDs we want to light up, in this case 30. These two pins are irrelevant now. The two lines that we commented out made it so that we could bit bang on these two lines, uh, pin 4 and pin 5, uh, to send the signal to the LEDs. This means that you could use any two pins on the Arduino, but the Arduino has a dedicated SPI bus and it's much faster and more reliable. Um, so why not use the hardware that's actually included with the Arduino? And by doing that, we, uh, by uncommenting line 27, that's what we're doing. Now, if we go down into the setup here, we see some stuff that's irrelevant to us because we're using a Uno, but then we're going to, so we initialize this uh, strip here, line 27, we're then going to begin the strip and initialize the pins for output, and then we're going to show the strip. And what this does is it turns off all the LEDs right away because we haven't told which LEDs need to be lit up. Now, the LED on top of the microcontroller, like every microcontroller has its own memory. So if we don't tell explicitly what that microcontroller should be doing, it's going to do what it did last time. So if you had an LED on, showing it and writing off to it, uh, you turn it off. So the LEDs, what you were seeing here is what I'm calling a light snake. We have a string of lights that are progressing down the line. There's a head to the snake and there's a tail to the snake. These are identified here by these two values. So if you pay close attention to the LED strip here, you'll see that each snake is actually 10 LEDs long and how far they travel, although I think it goes off the screen a bit here, uh, is for a total of 30 pixels. So we only have 10 pixels lit up at any moment. We then have a color value here. And despite it being a 32-bit value, we are using only 24 bits. Similar to an RGB value that you might see in Photoshop or something like that, we are writing a color where the red, green, and blue values are represented by an 8-bit digit. So in this case, this is hexadecimal, this is 255, this is 0, and this is 0. Now in the code, it says here that it starts red, but I'm finding that's not actually the case because here, if I upload this sketch again, we see that the very first color is green followed by red followed by blue. So it's green, red, blue. That's the order of the lights and the order of the colors. So what's actually happening here is we are saying that our very first color is going to be green. Our red value is going to be zero and our blue value is going to be zero. And that's how we get 100% green initially. We then go into our loop, and in our loop, we are setting the pixel color of the strip such that the head is equal to our color. In this case, it's going to be green. We then set the tail color to be zero. So that's as if all of these values here were written as zero, which is effectively meaning shut it off. We then show the strip. We wait for 20 milliseconds, and then we go through this check here where we increment the head value and we evaluate whether or not it is higher than the number of pixels that we specified earlier 
in this case 30. If it is higher than the number of pixels, then we reset the head back to zero, starting the sequence all over again. We also shift the color value over eight bits. So what we're doing there is we're taking this 255 and we are now moving it to the center two values, replacing what was 255 there with zero. So we're going to move these two Fs over to the center, which would give us red. And then we check whether or not that value is equal to zero. In this case, it wouldn't be because some of the values in the center are populated. Um, so we go through again, and then we would do the shift again, such that we are now populating just the blue bits and leaving all the others zero. And then we go through the uh, loop again, and then we would shift the Fs off the screen, so to speak. You know, it, it would make all of these values zero, in which case it truly would be zero. So we reset our color back such that green is maxed out and all the others are zero, thus repeating the cycle of getting the colors again. Finally, we increment the tail, and if the tail exceeds the number of pixels, we reset the value of the tail to zero, thus preserving a distance of 10 between the head and the tail. So there you have it, your very first dot star example. Now what I'm going to do is create another video where I show you how you can actually control this. Like this is, that was a lot to take in for somebody who has no idea what's going on, you're brand new to this. So in the next video, I'm going to, we're gonna write our own program where we can control the pattern how we want it. And we're gonna have some fun with these bad boys. I'll see you then. For more tutorials like this, visit thezanshow.com.